Thanks. Good morning. Uh, I'm Liam Rowney from Gist Collections. I'm responsible for uh, journal negotiations, in fact, all of our content negotiations. Um, 15 minutes is not enough time to go through all of the data that we had available to us, so I'm, I'm going to try and hair through things, but just give a, a flavour of, um, of what we're doing. I want to start very briefly with the context. I want to start with the context of, of DISC open access activity, because it does go beyond just negotiations around hybrid. Um, I want to talk about why we wanted open offsetting agreements in the UK, um, and just to uh, recap on what the data on APC spend over the last couple of years has been telling us and then go into more on the experiences, uh, some principles for offsetting agreements based on those experiences, the challenges that we're facing and our conclusion and some conclusions based on those. So in terms of the context, I think just I just want to emphasize that JISC is now putting in place a range of services which support open access throughout an article's entire life cycle. And actually, negotiations around pricing is a very small part of the various services that we provide in this area. Um, and indeed, I think it's also worth noting that we also support things like Scope 3. We have a range of agreements with pure gold open access publishers, both in the journals and increasingly in monographs as well. Uh, so our interest in this area is across the whole spectrum, uh, gold, green, etc. Why do we want open up, uh, offsetting agreements? They are designed to address a very specific challenge facing UK research institutions as they respond to the policy requirements on them, which have come out in the last two or three years, arising from Finch, and the particular favouring that we have in the UK, at least from some funders, for gold and gold in hybrid journals. Um, and in terms of what this means for our most research-intensive institutions, in terms of the combined cost of APCs and subscriptions in hybrid journals, uh, the total cost of publication, as we call it, and especially as the JISC and countries like Netherlands being out in front um, before there are any global reductions in the cost of these journal agreements, and we need to limit and constrain those costs to institutions. We've been acting very much in the spirit of Finch and the government response, and we've really been referring back to this quote from, from the minister at the time, that a meaningful proportion of an institution's total uh, costs with a publisher should be offset against the total subscription payments with that publisher. And that's very much what we've been trying to achieve. Um, in terms of, again, why we're trying to achieve this, this very starkly shows just for 15 institutions the increase in payments on APCs over the last three years. Uh, what's interesting uh, for 2015, and, and we're basing some of that on projections based on the first six months of the year, is that the amounts are starting to, to taper off considerably. The growth is starting to taper off. Actually, it's not quite as stark as it seems. 2014 was somewhat anomalous in as much as one very large London institution paid a significant amount of its own money in APCs. They've now stopped doing that, um, and that means that the underlying trend is still growing, even if the overall amount seems to be t uh, slowing down the overall growth. But it does point us to why action on this is so important from a UK perspective. So what are our experiences with offsetting? Um, We've been working on this now since the start of 2014 in terms of putting in place agreements. And it is worth noting that all of the agreements that we have in place are pilots. That is in both our interests as a sector and I think in the interests of the publishers involved. We need to monitor what is a changing environment and changing often at quite a, a rapid pace. We also need to see how effective these agreements are um, from both a cost perspective and I think more and more importantly from an administrative perspective as well. In fact, increasingly the questions that are put to us as we're developing those agreements is how are we going to implement, implement and administer these in a way which is sustainable. We have a range of agreements in place already. Um, Stephen's going to talk, as, as is Julian, um, about in, from the Institute of Physics, Royal Society of Chemistry, SAGE, Taylor and Francis and, and Wiley. Uh, not all of those are the biggest 
uh, publishers for, that we have agreements with, but uh, certainly they, they account for a significant amount of open access uh, publishing in the UK. We're also about to launch an agreement with Springer. Um, I think the, the thing that we want to mention there, or that I want to mention there specifically, is it really does build on the experiences that we've had with the other publishers, and we've taken account of the things which we've started to learn in terms of planning around the administration, uh, how we communicate with, it, with both institutions and authors about the nature of the agreement, how we're trying to cap absolute spend for the sector for open access, and, and I think and I hope that it will be transformative in the amount of open access that it makes available in the UK, the administration of that open access, and the cost efficiency. Uh, this will be the first agreement which will actually lead to a decrease in spend with a publisher on the combined cost of publication. Now, all of these schemes are different. All of the systems are different we, and, and go, around, uh, go about offsetting in different ways. We have offsets on APC spend against subscription costs. We have credits against APC, co uh, APC costs based on, on expenditure with publishers. We have voucher schemes in place. And we have flipped models where subscription fees are paying for APCs. And then there's a, an additional fee to cover access to the content, which we hope will decline over time as more and more content globally becomes open access. We are seeing in these agreements discounts of up to 90% on them. And all of the models and all of the systems have a different impact based on the nature of the publisher. Um, and again, I would come back to the fact that these are pilots, and I think it's worth reflecting on the fact that, as Salvatore said, to an extent we've been operating in the dark in this and developing these systems in the dark. And, and I would say that all of the publishers that we've, we've listed there, the, even if the agreements are not perfect, even if the administration, the costs, etc., are not perfect, all of them have engaged, in our view, honestly with the issue and it has been the nature of the engagement which we have welcomed so much as we try and work constructively towards sustainable systems with all of them. Um, but based on those experiences, we were challenged as, uh, as GISC and GISC collections by UK libraries about the nature of the agreements. And they were saying to us, well, what is our ideal? what does a good proposal look like as we receive increasing numbers of them from publishers? How should we be evaluating these proposals? And how should we as a community more proactively state our requirements to publishers rather than discussing the issue and the nature of the challenge with them and then waiting for their a response, a proposal back from them? So based on this and, and based on considerable discussion with library directors, institutions, those who are involved in managing, implementing these systems, we came up with six principles. Now, these are probably going to change over time. They are designed to probably provoke discussion, uh, and they are very much live in terms of, of how we view them. But uh, the first one, and I think probably the most important one, that people wanted to see was that all of these agreements should support the transition to full open access. We are not interested in, interested in just moving to hybrid systems, etc. People are very interested in supporting a transition to full open access, and that the agreements should support that. Um, and I would say that, you know, uh, particularly the Institute of Physics approach, and I think potentially as well the um, the Springer approach do do that and have that as a baseline within them. That institutions should not charge the same, uh, sorry, that publishers should not be charging the same institution twice through the payment of subscriptions and APCs. That is, again, coming back to the issue of double dipping, which has been so important for both institutions and, I know, publishers. One that uh, all of our agreements, I think, at the moment, probably do talk about institutions participating in the big deal. Uh, from publishers, from hybrid publishers. Institutions um, have been very wary of this and very negative about this aspect of the agreements and do not want them to be restricted to, uh, to their 
involvement in the big deal with publishers. Specifically, I think there where they have significant payments to publishers outside of the big deal uh, through maintain, uh, maintained subscription spend and significant APC payments as well. Again, taking into account the nature of the UK situation, that these discounts should apply at the level of the subscribing institution. If the institution is making a significant expenditure on both subscriptions and APCs, that should be recognised in the agreements, and that they should operate on a cash basis. There is, um, there is a dislike of vouchers because of the administration involved in doing that at the institutional level, uh, though interestingly we have some data which seems to suggest high take-up of some voucher schemes, but nevertheless this is the feedback that we have. And finally, that, they, that it should be around, about the institution being able to manage and participate in these schemes. They should not just be aimed at individual researchers who, as Salvatore made clear, are perhaps not always as interested in some of this as the rest of us are. And it is institutions increasingly in the UK especially that are taking on the burden of this work. We also sort of re review the schemes in the light of some attributes. Um, Again, the degree to which they're supporting open access and a transition to open access, affordability, which is absolutely key, ease of administration and transparency. Now, not all of these are compatible with each other. Uh, a highly affordable agreement may lack transparency, uh, something which is very easy to administer, uh, may not be affordable, etc. But nevertheless, these are the types of criteria which institutions are viewing the agreements that we are putting in front of them uh, through. These are the criteria which they have said to us is absolutely important. And as we take forward agreements, as we review agreements, these will be the considerations that we will be making as we seek to improve them. So some challenges and conclusions. Um, I think the main challenge that we have is that there are still a number of hybrid publishers refusing to put in place offsetting agreements. And in my experience of sort of you know 13 years of, of working around journal negotiations, etc., this is one of the very few things which really cuts through to vice chancellor level and finance director level within institutions. This is one of the few things they seem to be very much aware of and have an intense dislike of, uh, and it is something that is a cause a cause of uh, considerable frustration, especially when we've had a number of publishers sort of take a risk. Uh, get involved, act constructively, trying to review this in the dark often with considerable cost exposure and administrative exposure to themselves and the fact that other publishers are not getting involved even though they are, as we've seen, bringing in considerable additional income is a source of concern. Um, Another challenge is, is that this is a dynamic policy environment. There are a number of reviews ongoing um, small reviews, unofficial reviews, both at the local institutional level, at the national level, and indeed at the European level. We're concerned about whether this is sustainable. Um, is it administratively sustainable? And we are putting considerable effort into that in terms of the development of services and working with institutions and groups of institutions to understand the administrative needs. Um, Especially in the UK, we have a very tight research funding, we have a very tight public funding environment at the moment that is not likely to in improve and research funding will be at risk and the amounts available to APCs may be at risk as well. And I think we are starting to see a retreat from hybrid in the absence of offsetting. We're starting to see an increasing number of local institutional policies where they will not support hybrid open access unless there is a substantial open a substantial offsetting proposal in place and that's coming from institutions who have been very large supporters of hybrid publishing as we put in place these agreements we also need to incentivize researchers and publishers i think in order in order that they will continue to be involved um, we're not seeing particular price sensitivity from authors um, and the latest data does not seem to show that they are changing their publication habits at all. I suppose that we wouldn't want them to necessarily. But nevertheless, we want them to be aware of these agreements. And I suppose unless we're seeing take-up of these agreements on the part of institutions, it will be difficult for us to continue to get publishers involved. So, very quickly, conclusions. Um, 
The data that we're seeing is, is sometimes contradictory at the moment. It is very early days for all of these. We've only been working on them for a year and a half. Very few of them have had much more than a full year to run. And I think it is probably too early to be certain of either the implications of the data and the impact that these agreements are having. There is still huge interest in the progress of offsetting schemes, both in the UK at the institutional level and overseas. Uh, we have a considerable number of consortia discussing offsetting schemes with us, I think wanting to know the progress, wanting to know how they might implement them in their own countries. Um, I do think that the success of offsetting schemes and the fate of hybrid open access are likely to be closely linked in the future, not at the moment, but as time moves on. And finally, I want to go back and emphasize that JISC is interested and wants to promote all approaches that offer high quality, cost effective and a sustainable transition to open access. Thank you.